Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Lambda Labs just sent everyone an email saying that you can now get the GH200 and the H200 in Lambda Cloud clusters. So they're not available just yet. They're renting for a staggering $5.99 an hour, which compared to what AWS is gouging everyone for H100s is actually pretty good. So the question is, why do you want these? Uh, are they really that much better than the coveted H100s? Have they been kind of tuned for anything specific? And when will NVIDIA actually let us see these? Those are the questions. Let's get into it. So basically, NVIDIA just released the new top of the line chip for AI work, the HGX H200. And this comes with a number of benefits. Basically, it's the first GPU NVIDIA has made with HBM3E memory right on die. Basically, the biggest takeaway from this is that the relative performance of processing when it comes to GPUs, and this shows in benchmarks of any other processor that does AI stuff, it all comes down to memory bandwidth, and also just how much of that bandwidth based on how much memory you have on the chip. Because basically, if you have more chips, it means more memory, but it also means you have more lanes between them, which means more bandwidth. So how much better is this than the H100? Uh, so basically, this is 1.4 times more memory dense than the H100. There is about a 2x increase in inference capability across the board. So training is important, memory is important for that. But what's really cool is the tensor core count in the H200 makes it significantly faster for inference. So that's taking an existing model, uh, looking at the weights, and then giving a result after you've finished all the training, which actually is where most of the money is made in these systems. If you've read anything that CoreWeave has published recently, uh, which is one of the biggest data centers that has NVIDIA GPUs, like NVIDIA funds them, NVIDIA, it really supports them and uses them as a guinea pig for their data center stuff. Money is lost in training. So you have all this data and you need to turn it into something useful. That's kind of a nice package model. That's where people lose money. Uh, but where all these companies make money is purely in inference. So what's cool is now in theory, if you buy and use the H200, um, the dollars per hour you're using give you twice as much capability. So you can have twice as many streams, twice as many images being generated. And that means in theory, 2x the revenue. So even if this card costs 1.9 times as much as an H100 per hour, you're still making money in terms of inference. And that's what everyone buying this card wants. So basically this has 1.4x the memory bandwidth, 1.8x the memory capacity relative to the H100. The cool thing here is that the scaling for um, capacity and bandwidth is actually quite good. So we still need more RAM to get that um, performance update to get the bandwidth improvement. But uh, this means that uh, this GPU is much more capable of doing real-time audio transcription, uh, generative AI work, and a lot of other things. And what's cool is a lot of the new benchmarks for these GPUs are really based on real-time audio transcription because it's one of the only things that really loads these GPUs up to a point that you can only have four to six instances of that running in real time at any given time on these GPUs. So the big question is whether companies will be able to get their hands on the new chips and whether they'll be actually supply constrained like they were with the H100. Um, people had orders in for the H100s in bulk for quite some time. And NVIDIA kind of just said, you're going to get them when you get them. And honestly, their answer for the H200 is also very similar. The first H200 chips are expected to be released and shipped in around the second quarter of 2024. NVIDIA claims it's working with uh, quote unquote global system manufacturers and cloud service providers to make them available to people who aren't buying them to put them in their own data center. And right now, the only people who can buy these basically are data centers. Um, individuals can't really buy these. And unless you want, you know, more than 100, it's probably hard to even get an allocation at this point. So outside of memory, the H200 on the surface looks pretty similar to the H100. But this memory upgrade is actually really, really meaningful. As I said before, it's the first GPU to use uh, NVIDIA's HBM3E memory. That brings the GPU's memory bandwidth to 4.8 terabytes per second up from 3.35 terabytes per second on the H100. The idea here is just to improve performance across the board. And the other funny thing with the amount of memory that these new GPUs have up now at 141 gigabytes is that's actually just about the size you need with a few of these to run the entirety of Llama 2 70B all on one GPU. So it's kind of funny that it seems like they didn't pick this number randomly and that NVIDIA now can claim to have the only single GPU that you can run Llama 2 on, which is kind of cool. And previously you'd need four or five uh, A100s or at least two H100s to do that. Density is still a big priority here. And the H200 is also built to be compatible with the same systems that already support H100. So if you have H100s and you have um, the SM5 uh, NVLink setups, these can just be plug and play. 
which again gives Nvidia an edge against anyone else trying to make GPUs that are doing this. Right now, we don't really know the exact pricing since that's actually under NDA for anyone buying these. We know that when the H100 initially came out, the estimate was between $25,000 to $40,000 each. So this is basically a really expensive GPU a lot of us probably will not be able to afford for some time. And it's probably still going to be a while before we even start to see uh, SM5 H100s or even you know the PCIe H100s showing up on eBay anywhere. And this announcement comes even as uh, you know anyone doing AI seriously at scale is even still just desperately just trying to find H100s. And the curious thing here is if NVIDIA will actually stop making the H100 or if they'll continue making that as long as they had the lithography available for their existing line of GPUs. That is more a decision for TSMC to make and we'll see kind of where that floats out in the new year. They're not really gonna give us too many details until then. What they have said is that the H200's debut for now won't affect production of the H100. Um, again, they're making so much money from selling the H100 that business-wise, it makes sense to keep using the lithography they've invested in as long as they possibly can. And the other cool thing with the GH200 is it's actually going to be used in some of the first AI-specific supercomputers. So right now there are 40 providers that are buying this as a complete system just to use for um, massive AI training and to have it be a pure NVIDIA system as well, which is kind of cool. And one of these has been publicly announced. It's called Jupiter and... It's in the ULIC facility in Germany, which will, which will actually become the world's most powerful quote-unquote AI system. And it's actually using a special spec of liquid-cooled GH200s and NVSwitch infrastructure. And it'll actually be the first to use NVIDIA's new Quantum 2 InfiniBand networking platform, which is the first thing coming out of Mellanox that uh, after NVIDIA has owned them entirely. So that'll be kind of cool. And it's interesting that now we have uh, traditional supercomputers that run things like Fortran, and then we have uh, AI supercomputers, which ironically are running Python, which um, if anyone told me that five years ago we would have supercomputers for AI that run on Python, I, may, I might have kind of questioned that, but it's a really curious development, and it means we're going to have the fastest AI um, possible. So uh, there's been some news that maybe uh, NVIDIA has found some workarounds to export GPUs to China. We'll be covering that soon. Uh, but anyways, if you like our content, please like and subscribe. Uh, let us know in the comments if you might try to buy a GH200. Uh, I know I can't afford that. Um, but um, let me know what you think, and we'll see you in the next video.